Hey, it worked on the first try this time. How about that? Let's see if my uh, audio is working. Somebody chime in. Got to wait for someone to show up first. I didn't do any kind of uh, notification on Facebook this time. And uh, we'll see how many people show because I didn't give any warning. And I'm a little late. I'm eight minutes late. Supposed to pop on at noon. Uh, I was making tater tots for Tay Tay. So I uh, just had some tater tots too. I didn't want to eat on camera. So I just devoured like five tater tots before I signed on here. And then uh, this thing. Holy crap, this thing's awesome. This is going to be um, very, very uh, Star Wars centric, I would say. I got this guy to unbox. Old Man Han. Force Awakens Han and or, spoiler alert, Rise of Skywalker, Mind Frickin' Dream by Kylo Ren, Han Solo, SH Figure Arts figure. So I'm going to unbox that. I literally just got a package in the mail, which uh, will be on the Wednesday show, and that came from Hong Kong, so that's going to be uh, going through some disinfecting. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to open that package up. It's actually... See it down there? Bam, right down there. That's from Hong Kong. So um, I got to make sure it's corona free before I open it up. But hey, guys, thanks for joining me. 34 people, nine thumbs up. What's up? Thanks for joining me on this Monday. Hopefully, you guys had a good weekend. Let's see who's here. CB Hunts had the first comment. So, what's up, CB Hunts? Rashad's here. Rashad, I still have not been to the post office. I'm a little scared to go places and expose myself. Expose myself? Uh, Wicked Hunter, uh, what's up, man? Uh, Art Gutierrez, you got a notification? Good, I'm glad notifications are actually going out. Montgomery Designs is here, Toto JR. Lord Luigi, uh, perfect timing. I was on a conference call that just ended. Hopefully the conference call was fruitful. Hopefully it wasn't a complete waste of time. Uh, Mitchell is here, AZ Legends. What's up, man? Uh, Jeff Garrity, great to see you as well. Sending a package to you this week. Holy frick. Sweet. Tech Chucker's here. What's up, Tech Chucker? Um, Toto JR. I already said Toto. Do I still collect SH Dragon Ball Z? I haven't bought one in a long time. But I did buy a Star Wars SHF. And I'm probably going to get more. I at least want to get one more to complete a scene. And I'll tell you what scene that is in a second here. But I got, um, I was struggling when I was trying to figure out what I was going to talk about, open up, because I only had the Han. And then I was like, you know what? Someone asked about the X-Wing and how I got it to kind of sit up in a flying position right in that area. So I'm going to show you the flight stand. I'm going to tell you where you can buy that because it, it's a very nice flight stand. This is it right here. Acrylic flight stand. You can move these little arms. So you can make it in like, you can make uh, the flight pose look like it's kind of like, is that called banking? I'm not an, uh, what's that called? A pilot. <laughs> so you can like make it look like it's doing that or like it's lifting off or like diving down. So a lot of different uh, options with these things. And there's also three different sizes. So I'll go over that in a second. Um, I got a couple Blu-ray movies in. I'm getting another one in today, which I'll show you on Wednesday. But I got a couple 80s movies in, which I'll show you those. I got a few comic books in. Since comic book stores, for the most part, are shut down, you can't physically go to a comic book store, I'm relying on buying stuff online. So I got some pretty hot comic books that people are after, some sought after comics that I'm going to show you. And I got a couple books, some book books, kind of book books. They're not like novels or anything, but they have a lot of very nice pictures. They're big books. And uh, one's a graphic novel, I guess. And uh, I got those at like half price books like a month and a half, two months ago. So before the outbreak, I got these and I was like, I was looking around for stuff to show you guys. And I was like, oh crap, I forgot to show you those things. So I'm going to show you those, but uh, I don't have a whole lot to show you. So I'll probably just, uh, we'll be chatting it up for this hour, four minutes in, 62 people in here, 24 thumbs up. Thanks for joining me. It's Monday. Holy frick, Ferb says, sorry, I have to say this every time. What's up, man? Randy Books, I'm doing good. CB Hunts, you know what? I'm not doing that good. <laughs> I uh, I went for uh, uh, a drive on, was it Saturday? I'll tell you a little story, story time with, with me. 
I, I went for a drive to drop uh, to get my mom's grocery list. Uh, and she lives about five miles away. I don't want her going to any more grocery stores right now because she's at risk, diabetes and elderly. So I don't want her being exposed to stuff. So uh, I was just going to go get her groceries for her. So I had to get her list, had to get her her Target card. And uh, I was driving to her house and I hit a pothole. So first of all, my car was doing just fine. My car is a 2011, so it's not a brand new car. But I was doing just fine. Sounded great. Running great. I hit a pothole. And when I hit the pothole, I noticed that my accelerator stopped working. I was pushing my foot on the gas and nothing was happening. I was not accelerating. Like what the hell just happened? So this pothole hit, it was a big pothole. It was just like, boom. And I was like, oh crap, hope I didn't blow a tire. I did not blow a tire, but literally my accelerator stopped working. My power steering stopped working, stopped working. Uh, and I was like, my car just freaking died on me. Uh, my electricity still worked. My AC still worked. My radio still worked, but everything that had to do with driving the car stopped functioning. Scary as crap. Thankfully I was on a back road, so I wasn't like on a highway. So I was like, what, what am I going to do? I can't block this road because it's literally one lane each way. So I saw a little gravel driveway and I pulled into it. I coasted into it and I had to really crank the steering wheel because again, my power steering was dead. So I pulled into this spot. I'm like, what just happened? I'm freaking out a little bit. I call my mom and I say, I'm not going to be there for a while. My car just died. She's like, okay, we'll just be safe. So I turn the car off and I think maybe I can just try and restart it and it'll be working again. So I turn the car off. I try and start it. It wouldn't start. My car was dead. So I was like, okay, well, this sucks. So I call Mrs. Cincy. I try and call her. No answer. <laughs> Apparently, as soon as I left, she jumped in the shower. So didn't answer her phone. So I'm like, okay, I can't get a ride back. I can't, I can't get her to come here so I can get out of this stranded car. I'm going to call AAA. So thankfully, she renewed our AAA at the beginning of the year. I called AAA. I said, I need a tow. My car is dead. I hit a pothole and the car died. And they're like, what? That doesn't make sense. I'm like, tell me about it. So they said, okay, we're going to send a tow truck out. Um, it'll be there by 8.37 p.m. It was 6 p.m. when they told me this. So this was a two and a half hour long wait for a tow truck. So I'm like, okay. So I just keep trying it. It wasn't, it wasn't turning over. The car was dead. So Mrs. Cincy eventually showed, I eventually got a hold of her. She got out of the shower. She was like, what's going on? I'm like, I've been trying to call you for 30 minutes. So uh, she showed up. I got out of my car, waiting for the tow truck. Tow truck shows up at eight, like 8.45. He, he got lost a few times. And I'm literally watching him on this map, this interactive map that shows where the AAA tow truck is. Dude's driving around in a circle. I'm like, dude, you are missing the turn. He's like, I know, I keep missing the turn. I'm like, well, freaking get on the right road. So he gets on the right road. He gets there. He's like, sorry, man, I just kept missing the turn. Like, it's okay. So here's what happened. I hit this pothole, blah, blah, blah. Here's what it sounds like when I try and start my car. Push the button. Starts up. Starts the frick up. I'm like, what the hell? I was so pissed that it started up. I'm like, dude, because this guy came all the way from like the airport, which is like a long ways away. I'm like, dude, I've been trying to start this car literally for two hours and it did not start. I assure you. He goes, I believe you. I'm like, I'm like, well, I guess it drives now, so I don't need a tow. And I go, I'm just going to drive it straight to Firestone, drop it off there. And he goes, well, I'm going to follow you to make sure you, you get along on your way. So that was cool of him. Very cool of him. So I literally drove the car. I drove the car to Firestone, dropped it off. And uh, they don't know what's wrong with it. So there's my story. That was my weekend, Saturday and Sunday. My car is officially something wrong with it. So I'm going to have to take it to a dealership and figure out what the frick's wrong with it. So that was a five minute story. Hopefully I didn't bore you to tears. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm kind of glad that it happened right now. When Miss, since he's at home, she's not at the office. We can share one car, but yeah, my car is a uh, toast right now. So I'm going to wait until this pandemic is kind of dwindling down. Hopefully that's not too long in the future. And then I'm going to take my car to the dealership and say, what is wrong with this thing? 
because that was scary. I'm just ha I'm happy it didn't happen on like a highway. I didn't get stranded on the side of a freaking highway, and it was just a back road. Anyway, car trouble is a biatch. I'm gonna get to some stuff here. So uh, the first thing, someone asked me, how do I get my X-wing? And I'm gonna go over this thing because this thing is freaking amazing. This is uh, such an upgrade to any previous X-wings that have ever come out. This is the vintage collection X vintage collection X-wing, little tongue twister there. And I do have an R2 on the way that is actually supposed to arrive today or tomorrow. So I'm gonna have a little astromech there, but I'm gonna show you a few things about this X-Wing, which I just think are so freaking cool that they included. Just little things that they did to upgrade this into such a great vehicle. But the first thing that I wanna address is, how do I get this thing to be in like a flight pose? And this is, again, a flight pose stand. And you can actually go to, let me just go to the tab here, uh, flightpose.com, F-L-I-G-H-T-P-O-S-E.com, flightpose.com, and uh, they, sell, they sell these stands, and uh, they're all $14.99, but they have a 10% coupon right now, so if you buy like two of them for like 30 bucks, it'll be three bucks off, so 27 bucks, but this thing is awesome, and you can, again, articulate these arms and make it in whatever flight pose you want it to be, but it's flightpose.com. I'm in no way affiliated or tied to this company. I wish I was so they could send me some, but uh, I just think it's an awesome stand and it's a great way to articulate your vehicles, to have them in like flight poses. Um, so there's a two and a half inch stand, a four inch stand and a six inch stand. I think this is the four inch stand. And I think the way that they measure them is by these little arms. So. I guess for like a two and a half inch stand, you could put like maybe something that kind of flies low, um, like a Luke's land speeder or a snow speeder or something like that. Um, this is the four inch, so I have the X-Wing on it, but you can also get the six inch so that it kind of sits up higher. So if you want to do like uh, the Death Star trench run or something, you could have like Vader's tie on a higher one and then Luke's X-Wing in front of it, or maybe like a Y-Wing or something. But um, these are awesome. So flightpose.com is where you find these. They're $14.99 each, and it's the same price for all the sizes. So if you want the small one or the large one, it's all the same price. But again, there's like a 10% coupon on there right now. Um, so that's how you can do that. So let me look at the comments real quick. Um, let's see. <clears throat> all right. A lot of comments here, 107 people already, 40 thumbs up. Thank you for the thumbs up. Thank you for joining. I just told a story on what happened to my car this week and my car is officially kind of deadish. Um, I could still drive it home. I mean, the guys at Firestone were able to drive it and stuff and test it out, but there's definitely something wrong with it. So I'm just gonna park it in my drive in my driveway, my driveway. And uh, as soon as this thing kind of winds down, hopefully in a month or whatever, then I'll take it over to the dealership. But I just told that story, uh, talked about the flight post thing. I'm gonna um, go over this X-Wing and show you all the little details that I think are so freaking cool. And then uh, let me look at some comments here. I'm just gonna jump to the bottom because I don't know where the heck I left off. So Alex Alvarez, is that an authentic Avalanche jersey? It's clean. Yeah, this is the Stadium Series jersey. I got, this is this one that they wore. They wore this one against the LA Kings when they uh, played at um, the Air Force Academy. I think in, where is that, Boulder or something, Colorado Springs? I don't friggin' know. But um, yeah, this is the outdoor game that they played. This is a Colorado Avalanche, Nathan McKinnon, number 29. Uh, what's up, Tom Flurry? Shane Hawkins, I assume those stands will work on GI Joe vehicles and will multiples hold up the Falcon? I would not trust it with the Falcon. That's such a heavy freaking vehicle. If you're talking about the Legacy Falcon, yeah, that's so big and heavy. I, I wouldn't trust these with it. Um, but they will work with uh, Joe uh, because I had my Sky Striker on one of these and I had a Rattler on one of these too and it works perfectly. Any kind of like flight vehicle, I would recommend these things for. I mean, they look so good on them. And they're clear, so you can't see like the arms very easily. So it, it looks like it's actually suspended in air. It's pretty cool. 
Kevin Bolender. I live in Colorado and I'm a huge fan of the Avs and Nathan McKinnon is my favorite player. Very cool. I wanted either a McKinnon or a um, Kale McCarr jersey. Uh, Roundhead K2 on the catwalk. He does his little turn on the catwalk. <laughs> uh, let's see here. David Hope, Star Wars needs lasers included. Stuart Fulbrook, I have that SH. Han Solo, he's amazing. So just to touch on that, I picked this one up. This was on, I guess it's on sale for uh, $49 on Amazon. Shipped, free shipping with Prime. So I thought it was a really good deal because I watched a couple reviews of this thing. And this might be the best likeness to Harrison Ford I've ever seen besides like Hot Toys. And... This thing looks amazing. I can't wait to open this one up. I'm going to open it up on this. Let's do it right now. How about that? So I'm going to open this up. This is the SHF Han Solo. And the main reason I picked this one up is because I wanted to kind of recreate the scene from Rise of Skywalker with him and his son, Kylo. So I want to get the um, Rise of Skywalker SHF Kylo Ren. It's not on sale right now. Amazon has it for like 74 bucks. And um, that scene really kind of, uh, it kind of hit me hard uh, in the theater when I watched it. I cried during that scene because um, it was a father-son moment and I'm big on those. Um, my father passed away in 2010. So I'm, um, obviously I miss my dad all the time, but any kind of like, uh, like father son kind of thing. It, you know, obviously I like that moment more than the force awakens father son moment, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it hit me hard when I was watching the movie, uh, in the theater and I cried and it was right after another scene in which I cried. I'm sure most of us have seen rise of Skywalker right now. So I will go ahead and just say it. The other scene where I cried was when Chewbacca screamed, um, uh, when he like kind of screamed out and when Leia passed. Uh, so that happened. And then I was like, Oh, and I was like, just a mess. And then this scene happened. I was like, Oh man. So, uh, I am looking forward to rise of Skywalker on Blu-ray or 4k. I'm going to definitely buy it there. I'm waiting actually for the voodoo uh, combo because it's available on digital right now on voodoo, but I want to own it the physical media as well. So I am uh, looking forward to that releasing, but I just opened this. I mean, that's amazing. That's freaking incredible. That is an incredible face scan. I'm sure that you're not really, this is not doing it justice right now on this camera, but this is just a freaking amazing uh, figure of old Harrison Ford, old Han Solo. Uh, he does come with, so this one is a holstered blaster, which came packaged with it. He also has an empty blaster or em I'm sorry, an empty holster. And then he can actually, he has a blaster too. So, and then he comes with a few hands. Uh, this one is, if you could see it, it's kind of an open palm. And then a matching open palm for the other hand. And then he has the uh, trigger finger hand right there. But this likeness, holy cow. So I got this one out. Uh, not a, you know, 100% fair comparison because this is not the Force Awakens version. But this is the Black Series version, which I really love. This is the Best Ben Han Black Series figure. And then here is the Force Awakens version. So, I mean, you can definitely see the amount of detail that the SHF has. And you can also see the kind of size comparison there between the two figures. I think the uh, SHF really scales well. And I am really, really looking forward to getting the Kylo Ren from uh, Rise of Skywalker now. And I'll just have them uh, pose together. And that's how I'll have them. So, um, just to go over the articulation. Is that a single joint and knee or double? That's single. Is that single? Single joint and knee. But it has a lot of kit or a lot of bend. Pretty good motion there. And then um, a little bit of motion in the ankle. Not too much. It, it has the SHF kind of double jointed elbow there, you could see. And then a whole lot of torso or ab crunch there. 
and then he can bend back about that far. And then the head movement, he can look almost straight down. Let me move the arm so you could see. Head movement there, head, mo head movement up. But uh, it's a really cool figure. Uh, definitely worth the $49.84, I think is what I paid for it. So I would absolutely recommend this figure if you're a Harrison Ford fan, if you're an old Han fan. Um, you know, the episode seven, eight, and nine are not my favorite in the entire Star Wars series, but they had a lot of moments, especially uh, Rise of Skywalker had a lot of cool moments. Um, that father-son moment, again, really hit me hard. So um, I really like this figure and I would definitely recommend picking it up. Let me just go ahead and put the, uh, I'm going to swap the hands out real quick and just to show you. Got to be careful with these because these pegs are like real small. And it's not always easy to get the hands in. I would definitely recommend heating it up beforehand. I'm kind of struggling to get this hand on now. And I don't want to break the peg. telling you guys this is a uh, there we go so there's the trigger finger and put the gun in his hand so there's that that and let me just put the little empty holster in the leg come on now I can't find I was going to say I can't find the hole. <laughs> All right, there we go. There we go. There he is. That's awesome. That's badass. So, yeah, I like this figure a lot. And I'm really looking forward to getting uh, at least one more SHF Star Wars figure. At least one more. That Kylo. I will probably not be like a completist with SHF. Um... I just noticed that he has a an upper, there's a cut right there in his upper ab, and then there's also a waist. So lots of articulation in the um, in the waist and abs. Anyway, I'm not going to be a completist when it comes to SHF Star Wars. These are probably just going to be in my uh, Black Series uh, Detolf shelf, but um, I'm definitely going to get the Kylo. So there you go. There's Han. SHF Han, again... I think the last time I checked, I think he is still only 49 bucks on Amazon. So if you're interested in that, please go ahead and get him. Um, all right, let's take a look at some comments here and then I'm going to get to the X-Wing. And then actually before that, I'm going to go over some comic books, Blu-rays and books. And then we'll get to the X-Wing at, um, at the end. So let's see. Let's see. Josh Pence, what's up, man? I just saw you on there. SHF always kills it. Very few are not great. Uh, let's see. Since you do have any of the 10-inch Funko Pops, just wondering if they are well-made. Uh, I had a few, and they look very, very cool. They look cool on a uh, display. Let's see. Clifton says, what's up, Josh Pence? All right. BJ says, moist. That's all he says. That's that's all BJ Bossel just said. It's just moist. Winston Winston Leggett. What's up, Josh? Uh, howdy from South Texas, Cincy, and chat, Mr. Imagination. I got my six-inch snake eyes, and he's awesome. Uh, Yeetus McYeet. Yeah, I love that figure. It's definitely uh, one of my favorites of the year so far. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Speaking of SH figure arts, have you got any interest in the 70s Japanese Spider-Man figure or the soul of Chigokin Leonardo uh, or Leonardo? Um, no, I was watching the Foosh the other day and he had mentioned that Japanese Spider-Man figure from a Japanese Spider-Man series. I wasn't even aware that that existed. Um, my first encounter, and he had actually mentioned this briefly on his video, my first encounter with Spider-Man was on the Electric Company cartoon from the late 70s, early 80s. Um, Spider-Man had a, a, like a live action little vignette on the Electric Company, which was a kid's TV show, for those that are not aware. Uh, let's see, let's see. 
Rashad says, I have the Force Awakens SH Kylo Ren. I used to have that one. I really want the Rise of Skywalker one because he comes with the helmeted head sculpt and the regular head sculpt. And you can actually have the unhelmeted head sculpt with the cape on because the cape is a separate piece that goes over the neck peg. And that's how he looked during that scene. I want to basically have that same scene with Han uh, where Kylo does not have his helmet on, but he has his cape on. And you can have that look with that specific figure. Uh, Brewers Baseball Rules. What's up, man? Clifton, check the target app. Mine said they're in stock. Clifton said, can't wait to start picking up the Empire Strikes Back Black Series vintage figures. I really want the Luke. That's the one that I want the most from that entire wave. I, I want the Bespin Luke because it has a new uh, digital face printed uh, face or head sculpt. And I'm really looking forward to that because the uh, old head sculpt on that Bespin Luke looked terrible. Uh, so, Night of Ren says, shout out to Morgan Freeman and the Electric Company Spider-Man. That's right. Morgan Freeman, uh, I think he got his start on the Electric Company. Can you give a shout out to Tattoo Tattooed Toy Hunter? He's in New York City helping with coronavirus. Yes, Uber Hulk. Shout out to Tattooed Toy Hunter. Absolutely. Shout out to all uh, medical staff, nurses, doctors that are dealing with this right now. Um but yes, absolutely. First responders, those guys are doing the tough job right now. Uh, did Art just leave? It said, take care, RG. Uh, you remember the live action Spider-Man series from the way back starring Nicholas Hammond? That should bring that out as a figure. Was that, I, I don't, is that the one from Electric Company? Did you get any new comic books lately? Excellent segue there, Winston. Um, so I'm expecting three packages of comic books. I, I participated in an online sale uh, from Duncanville Bookstore, a local comic book store. They did a, a few online sales, and I bought some comics there. So two packages from them. I'm getting one package from Atomic Empire. And then I have a few comics on, uh, on hold for my subscription at Keith's Comics. I'm not sure if they're going to mail those out. but um, So, yeah, I'm getting some books in the mail, so I'll be showing you those. I was going to kill all my <laughs> subscriptions and just catch up, but I've been doing so much reading since I'm at home so frequently uh, at nights and mornings when I wake up before I start working. I'll just start reading comic books. I've gotten through a ton, stacks, stacks of comic books I've gotten through. So uh, it's keeping me very, very busy, and I'm reading a lot of very, very interesting and cool stories along the way. But here is a comic book that I picked up. This is Batman number 90. This is the first appearance of the character, the new villain, the designer. And this book has shot up in price. I don't even know what this thing's going for now, like probably 30, 40 bucks. Um, but I just read it or I just bought it because it's part of this new storyline, which Tinian is writing. Uh, I just finished the Tom King run, uh, the uh, City of Bane run. And uh, I'm interested in um, what Tinian has to offer. People are raving about Batman right now. It's the most pulled and most purchased book right now. So um, I got issue 90. This is the cardstock variant with Riddler. Uh, this is the cardstock variants are a dollar more. They're $4.99 versus $3.99. Uh, but they offer some uh, very, very cool variant art. I also picked up both the covers of this one because I got a pretty good deal on buying both comic books as opposed to just one. I don't think this is a first appearance or anything, but this is issue 91 of Batman, so the one right after that one, the first designer, and it says, guest starring Harley Quinn against the threat of a Jokerized Gotham City Police Department, GCPD right there. So there's the regular cover. And then I also bought the uh, cardstock cover, the villain variant. So this was $4.99, Penguin on the front there. Uh, I think the next issue, 92, is the one that's going to have Punchline on the cover. They're doing two uh, two or maybe three variants with Punchline. Punchline is the new sidekick of the Joker, for those that don't know. Because Harley Quinn is no longer uh, with the Joker. I guess they were kind of following the Birds of Prey movie, which I did. I watched and I really liked, by the way, just to let you know. Uh, but there you go. Yeah, um, he has a new sidekick named Punchline. And this is these are the comic books I got so far. So um, my Wednesday and or Friday... Shows, I I will probably have those new uh, comic books. So I'll show you a bunch of books that I bought. Um, I also bought some, the Dunkinville Bookstore live sale. I bought some.
mini series from the eighties that I read when I was a kid, when I was 13 years old, I read it. And, uh, it was one of the first Batman stories I ever read. Uh, so I bought that four issue miniseries. I'll show you that one whenever I get the, uh, the box. Um, yes, BJ, I absolutely do. BJ asked the question, do you need any 80s Joes or Transformers Marvel comics? I got doubles. I do. I actually have an, a, a long box of all 80s comic books and I was going through there. I'm making a list of all the Joe issues that I'm missing. And um, all the X-Men issues and stuff. I have, there's a few X-Men issues that I still need as well. Uh, let's see. BJ said, uh, oh, he's talking to Jim. What did Jim say? Why haven't I gotten my snake eyes yet? Um, and then BJ said, did you order it when it first went up? I think that uh, if you ordered it a little bit later on, I think it was up for a full day for 24 hours before it sold out. And I think later on in the ordering process, if you ordered it later on versus like right when it up went up, I think they're mailing them out based on when you ordered it. So they probably have like first, second, third shipments and whatnot. I ordered it as soon as that damn thing went up. So I got mine pretty early, but I'll just hang in there. I'm sure you'll get it soon. Storyline Joker should kill a guy and convince Batman he did it. Psychological terror. Uh, let's see. Jeff Simpson says, hey, what's up, man? Uh, Batman is killing it, and then they decided to do Gotham High. They're going to twilight the F out of him. I got X-Men 135 the other day. That was one of my X-Men grails, Night of Ren says. My X-Men grail is uh, Giant Size X-Men number one, which I had at one point. The other one is X-Men number 94, which is the debut of the new team, which I had at one point. But I definitely want to get those. Uh, they were reader copies at best, but I want to get like decent... Um, condition copies of those love your videos bro great job thank you tom have you read the revolution series from idw it's the series when gi joe transformers mask and a few other properties had a crossover that is in one of my boxes of uh, books to read i i have a i think four or six issues of that whole crossover and i need to get to that uh that's my read pile consists of uh, a couple long boxes so that's in there Waiting on that Mezco Predator and Alien for pre-order. Are you getting that Planet of the Ape Mezco, Cincy? No. Uh, Jeff Down South. I'm probably not going to get the Planet of the Ape Mezco, but I absolutely want the Alien. Um, I'm just not feeling the Planet of the Ape one. I, I don't have like a real strong connection to the original movies. I do love the more recent movies, though, that um, What's-His-Face did. Matt... The guy that's doing the freaking Batman movie. Brain fart time. I tend to brain fart at least once on every freaking live video where I can't think of something that I have literally thought about and said within the past few days. Matt Reeves, thank you, Lord Luigi. I think Lord Luigi has bailed me out a few times <laughs> in the past few videos when I've brain farted. Um, but yeah, Matt Reeves. His Planet of the Apes movies are really, really good. At least I like them. Check out the old Marvel G.I. Joe Special Missions comic, too. It was a great series. Yeah, I had the, I had the first few issues. It wasn't the first one. Didn't it have a wetsuit on the cover? I remember that. Do you have any mask figures? Yeah, I have a ton of mask stuff. Can you... Of course, I'm in the way. I, it's uh, right there. Right over my shoulder, right there. Mask stuff there. And then uh, Venom stuff right there. Jackhammer, Switchblade, Piranha. Uh, Condor, Thunderhawk, uh, freaking forgot the name of that damn pickup. And then there's, uh, the hurricane there. Yeah, I have a, and then there's the, uh, the, the rhino up top. Uh, let's see. am I the only one working or what? I'm not working right now. I'm on lunch break right now. I have a lunch break, uh, until, uh, about 1.10. I started my lunch break at 12.07 or so. Uh, but I, I, do have some work that I got to do today. I'm writing a little scripty script for a work video. By the way, this question comes up literally like almost every single video. What do I do for a living? I do video production, corporate video production. So I do training videos, promotional videos, advertising videos. I'm a video production person. And uh, I do everything. I basically do the job of like 
three people because I uh, write the scripting. I figure out what the video is going to be about. I do the outlining. I write the scripting. I'm the talent in front of the video. So you see my face on the video. I'm the director of the video. I do all the lighting. I do all post-production. I do all the Adobe After Effects. I do the sound, the sync, the audio sync, the freaking everything. Start to finish. So that's what I do. That's my job job. You have an MCU Marvel Legends shelf. I do not. I have all comic book Marvel. Where the frick are they? You can't see them. My chair is blocking them. I have all uh, comic book Marvel Legends on my shelf. I have, I have uh, one, two, I have four. There they, is that them? No, that's kind of them right there. I have four shelves and I have an entire detail of all Marvel Legends. I've got 70s and 80s X-Men. I've got 90s X-Men. I've got villain X-Men villains. And then I have regular non-X-Men villains at the bottom. Uh, take care, CN. Thanks for joining. I just saw your message pop up there. We were working mass is still in lockdown, unfortunately. How many COVID-19 safety videos have you made so far? Do you watch uh, Jay Hernandez? He kills it. I love Jay Hernandez. I, he brings something so original to his review videos. I, I think he's awesome and I love him. And he has very good taste in music. I love the music in his videos. Um, so yeah, I, I really like that, that dude's channel and I watch it. Let's see, do you have any issues with your detail lights falling off? No, and if they do fall off, you need new adhesive and basically you can just buy those 3M adhesive strips and then cut little pieces. That's what I've done because I think most of those, you know what, all of those uh, diode or light, what was the original question? Was it about the lights? All of those lights are secondary strips because I ripped them all off before we moved to Texas so I had to rip the adhesive off. So those are all done with that little 3M adhesive strips. Uh, has anyone that has seen your training videos recognized you as Cincy? Not yet, and if they have, they haven't said anything to me. Um, but uh, I, I am 100% sure that people that have seen me in my corporate videos have also seen these videos because a certain demographic that watches these videos also watches my corporate videos. Uh, let's see. I actually hooked up with Jay with his 80th anniversary Thor. So every time I see it in his vids, I'm like, damn, I have him. I have that. Very cool, Lord Luigi. Uh, all right. So let me go ahead and what the heck did I already talk about? I need to show you the X-Wing. I showed you the comics. I want to show you these books real quick. I got these at half price books and these were super cheap. This right here, I believe this is the first two or three issues of the original Eastman and Laird's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles comic book in color. So they have gone back and they've done color reprints of all the original TMNT comic books. But I think this was the very first time they ever added color to the book. Because this was, first of all, it's by First Comics, which I don't think is still a thing. I don't think they're an actual business anymore. And the actual... Print date on this is 1989. So this is a fifth printing, as you can see there, 89. But uh, this is what it looks like on the inside. So it's that's the first issue of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. You can see there, but it's in color. The original comic book, black and white. So there is that. Beautiful freaking art. I freaking love Eastman and Laird art there, but look at that. So awesome. And yes, if you're not aware, in the comic book, they all had red bandanas. I think that the multiple, the multicolored bandanas was introduced in the cartoon. There's that. Let me show you what Splinter looks, or uh, Splinter and Shredder. So... Oh, I just got to show this. This is so awesome. Look at that art. Beautiful art. I think I paid like five bucks for this thing, which is crazy. All right. I got to find Shredder. Show you that. And then, uh, okay, so here we go. So there's Shredder. He's wearing red. 
right there. And I have on my top shelf of my Turtles, Detolf, the actual comic book version of Shredder and the Turtles. So, and then there's more art. And then I want to show you one more thing. I flipped through this right before I went uh, live here. These are early, early sketches of the Turtles. Here's how they were first imagined. And the date on this is 83. So that's how long ago this idea was conceived of these Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. But this is badass. Uh, this is cool because it's not only vintage, it's 1989. This is the fifth print of this book, but it has all the uh, early, or at least a few of the early TMNT books in color. So I got that at Half Price Books. You find some real gems at Half Price Books sometimes, including this one. Uh, this is the ultimate visual guide. I collect these books. And basic, I'll show you what's in here, but I got this one for, it was like $15. But this is for Rogue One, which I absolutely love that movie. But uh, this is cool because it shows, like, it gives you backstory on, like, background characters. That little girl that Jen Erso saved from, what was it, like a grenade or something or an exploding something. There's backstory on that character. On extras, there's backstory. So it really, really expands the universe or expands the story of these characters that you might have seen in the background for a split second. In the, um, those are all Jetta civilians. I thought that this was so cool. This person that was like almost like a Lobot, they're missing the top part of their head and they're just like half a freaking head. That's such a cool aesthetic there. More uh, civilians from that planet. But this is what these books get into. Uh, I wanted to know more about these guys right here that you saw that look like uh, Imperial Royal Guards. You saw them on that planet when Jin and Cassian are walking around. So these books, I really, if you're a Star Wars fan, I really, really recommend these books. I mean, there's a two-page spread on Cassian, a lot of information on Cassian Andor. And then they also get into, let's see if I could find the page that I was looking at. There's a size comparison with different, oh, this is cool, right here. So these are all the different helmets that the pilots were wearing in the space scene at the end. This is the kind of stuff that I just think is so freaking interesting. All of this detail, someone's entire job was like painting these helmets to look individual and different. Um, it's just so, so cool. I love this kind of stuff. How they made like all the pilots look like they were from the freaking 70s <laughs> because the original New Hope, obviously, in 1977. So they gave these dudes like mustaches and like freaking porn star hair right there. But uh, I just love how they did that. It's such a such a cool thing to do. The fact that um, this was a newer Star Wars movie, but they made it look more genuine like A New Hope. There was a uh, page in here, which I'm trying to find, that shows, oh, this is a cool picture, right here, the Shore Trooper and Storm Troopers. Um, let's see, some of the art and visual dictionary Star Wars books actually told a better story than what was on the screen, which shouldn't be that way for some of the big stuff, Imperial Holocron says. Montgomery Designs, uh, Krennic just released from Hot Toys today, don't know if you, uh, I did see that, uh, Justin's collection got a Krennic, I'm going to watch his review and see how it is. He gets stuff super early. So usually uh, I can watch uh, his videos and see, hmm, should I pre-order that? Because he gets stuff direct as soon as it releases over in Hong Kong. Um, let's see. Knight of Ren says he went out toy hunting and got the Demogoblin wave and uh, Marvel Legends Rescue. I picked up Rescue on my Endgame shelf. Uh, let's see. I just want to find that one page that shows the comparison between the vehicles, and then I'll show you. That'll segue into the uh, – what the frick was that? That'll segue into the X-Wing because I'm going to show you that. I have 16 minutes left, 149 people, 72 thumbs up. Thank you for joining me, by the way, and thank you for thumbs upping. I appreciate that. There's – hey, I didn't know there's two of them. Two tubes who you saw in the solo movie. There's two of them. I didn't notice that there was two of them. That's pretty cool. And they have their own X-Wings? 
That's freaking awesome. Right there. That's awesome that they have their own X-Wings. Uh, I'm not going to freaking find it. And I don't want to take all this live. Uh, is this it? I'm close. I'm close, I think. Almost there. <laughs> I just had it. All right, I guess I'm not going to find it. Anyway, there's a very cool page. I recommend this book. There's a very cool page that shows uh, the size difference between like the ATACT and a S A T S T, like the little chicken walker and the big, huge ATACT. That ATACT was bigger than the ATAT. And then the one in uh, Last Jedi towers above all of those. So it's just cool. I don't know. I I'm a sucker for that kind of stuff, the size comparison stuff, just to see how big these vehicles were in comparison with an actual person. I geek out over that stuff. But let me show you this right here. And again, if you're just joining, I do have an R2 on the way. I'm actually supposed to receive it either today or tomorrow. I got it on Hasbro Pulse. They still have it. Uh, Amazon has that R2, but it's marked up to like $20. But Hasbro Pulse has it for $12.99. So I got that. And then I ordered the um, Crossbones. And Winter Soldier from the Black Widow Wave. I got those two. I didn't think I was going to order any of the Marvel Legends from the Black Widow Wave, but I decided to get those two. They're still in Hasbro Pulse. I think you can get the Taskmaster also. So if you're interested in that, please do so. But I want to show you a couple features on this X-Wing. Uh, if you have like previous versions of this X-Wing, there's new things that I found on here that are really, really cool. So first of all, let me open up the cockpit here and show you. This is something that I noticed. I don't know if they've done this. Can I get the freaking cockpit open? I don't know if they've done this with... Um, of course. Of course this happens. <laughs> I, pulled, I pulled the damn cockpit open. So remember uh, Luke had that targeting computer that he did not want to use and he, um, he wanted to use the force or just trust his instincts on shooting the... Uh, the thing into the uh, the thing, <laughs> into the Death Star little thing. So that targeting computer actually articulates. So there's uh, Vintage Collection Luke, and this little targeting computer, you can pull it out. Look at that. That's such a cool little added touch. That's not necessary, but they, they added that anyway. Uh, another cool little added touch on this thing, there's the cockpit, I'll have to put that on later, is uh, this little flap here. So this is for the landing gear, and it closes. So you don't, you can't see the landing gear there. Um, on previous versions of the X-Wing, I don't think they had that flap there. This is a new thing. So that's cool that it hides in there. Another thing that's cool, see that? Little missile launcher there. And if you don't wanna display that, you could just swivel it like that. Another cool thing, that's where R2 goes, or that's where an astromech goes, but if you ever wonder how the frick R2 or an astromech gets up into there, they get kind of sucked in through the bottom. But look at this. It's a little door just to show you how the astromech gets up into there. That's the only function for this little door is just to kind of give you that sense that that's, where the, that's how the astromech gets up into his position. Um, what were the other things? I think that was everything, all the little details. I mean, just a great paint job overall. And then it's got this little button on the back, which you push down and then out, and then it's locked into that mode. So I think I got this for, I don't remember how much I got this for. I think it was on sale at one point, 70 bucks or something. Um, but I've been waiting for a X-Wing to come out for a while. So it was an easy pickup for me as soon as I saw it was available, but I definitely recommend this. I know that the uh, Poe Dameron X-Wing from um, Rise of Skywalker also is very, very cool. I've watched a review on that, and it has some really cool little details. But, um, I mean, that's, that's the kind of stuff that I really like is these little details, these things that they keep adding because this is – they've done X-Wings before, but just little details like this little hatch and that little hatch for the astromech and the freaking targeting computer – just add so much to this thing. So really, really like that. 
and I recommend it. Uh, so I, th I got 11 minutes left. I'm just going to – let's just chat it up now. Once again, I opened up this Han Solo SH figure arts from Force Awakens. My main goal in getting this was to recreate the scene from Rise of Skywalker where he has a father-son moment with Kylo, and I really want the Kylo Ren from Rise of Skywalker. SHF. Um, I didn't talk about these yet. These are some movies that I bought. Uh, I've been buying 80s movies, movies that I remember as a kid. I, uh, I have uh, a movie coming today in the mail from Amazon, but I got these, and I really loved this movie when it first came out. I remember seeing it in the theater. My friend and I saw it probably 10 times in the theater, but The Last Starfighter, just an awesome movie. Um, for those that are not aware, it's a 80s sci-fi movie where this guy that's really good at this video game, it's a kind of a, a space shooting video game, gets recruited to actually be a starfighter out in deep space because he's so good at that game. Just an awesome sci-fi movie from the 80s. And then this one right here, I remember watching this thing over and over. I was mesmerized by 2010. Uh, this was the sequel to 2001 A Space Odyssey, but uh, I was absolutely blown away and mesmerized by this as a teenager. Um, and I remember certain scenes. I haven't seen this movie in probably 15, 20 years. So I'm really looking forward to watching this again, but it is 2010, the year we make contact. And then I have uh, another movie coming today, which I'll show you on the Wednesday. I'm going to open up the package from Hong Kong on Wednesday. And then I have uh, obviously a bunch of comic books, which I'll show you on Wednesday and or Friday as well. So let's get to the chat here. I have missed uh, a lot of <laughs> comments in the chat. So let me see if I can, I'm just gonna scroll up a bit and then uh, start from there. Gladiator Briggs is the dealer will just sell you another car. I hope not uh, because my car's paid off. Uh, so I'm, uh, I like not having a car payment. That's very nice. Um, Miss Cincy's car is almost paid off too. I like living debt free. That's the best thing. So e even if I have to drive a car from 2011, I'm just going to get it fixed. Hopefully it doesn't cost a lot to fix it. Hopefully it's an easy uh, issue to fix, but um, I like not having a car payment. How's everybody in your family doing? Everyone's doing great. Um, trying not to be bored. The girls still finish their schoolwork before noon. So they're just playing for the rest of the day. They need more schoolwork. I'm tempted to ask their teacher <laughs> to give them more schoolwork. Uh, at this point, uh, they even there's there's like mandatory assignments and optional. And Tay Tay and P Dog are like, Daddy, do I have to do the optional? I'm like, in our house, all of the optional assignments are mandatory. So yes, you have to do them. So uh, I just want them to constantly be, you know, working their brain and learning and. Uh, not doing TikTok dances for half the day. Uh, I get that Red Hulk I messaged you about uh, last Friday. Freaking love it. I'm glad I got it. Ian says, yeah, Red Hulk is very, very good. He's down there. You can't see it, but he's down there on my villain shelf next to Monster Venom, which is also a very, very good figure. Uh, can I give a shout out to... Oh, I already read that one. I went way high on these comments. Let's scroll down a little bit. Okay. Let me scroll all, all the way to the bottom and I'll work my, my way up. Thanks for these sweet getaways. Absolutely, Darth Clueless. Uh, they're good for me too. They're good for, you know, I just like, um, I like the fact a lot of people are uh, kind of taking to YouTube. I watched John Krasinski. He actually has, uh, what was it called? Something Good News, uh, where he, he's like doing his own newscast, but it's all like good news. Um, he's got his own YouTube channel now. John Krasinski has his own YouTube channel. Uh, I was watching Mike the Hunter. He is back on YouTube. He did a, a freaking hilarious video, uh, Whisper Challenge. I actually, I, I laughed so hard at his Whisper Challenge, uh, where basically uh, Mary had like headphones on and there's music playing and then he would like mouth word and she would try and like figure out what he's saying. Uh, really entertaining video. And I thought about doing that with uh, the girls and uh, Mrs. Cincy as well. I think that'd be a funny video. Uh, but I'm uh, I'm watching a lot of YouTube in my spare time because uh, a lot of people are actually doing videos and stuff. So it's pretty cool. So I guess my original statement was this is good for me. This is kind of therapeutic for me because I actually have people to talk to outside of my family. 
Um, and I kind of feel like we're all kind of like together uh, personally when we're doing these like these chats and stuff. So I don't I don't get stir crazy. And hopefully that works for you, too. Uh, Toy Chase, do I have a Patreon? I do. What is it under? Pa I think it's patreon.com slash Cincy nerd. Basically, what I did with that is I uh, started doing the live streams. Obviously, they're live. So when I do videos, I'll post them a day early on there and they're all ad free. Uh, my normal videos on YouTube, there's like ads on them and stuff. So you get them a day early, ad free, and then I um, try and do uh, exclusive videos on there too um, to give a reason to just be a patron. So, um, and then I, when I have like stuff to give away, I'll probably do giveaways on there too. I haven't really, since I've been doing all these live streams, I haven't really done a lot of just videos, edited videos. So, once this uh, pandemic kind of goes away, I'll probably do a few less live streams and more actual videos, and then they'll be on Patreon again early. Do you have a stand? Yeah. So I talked about this earlier, so feel free to watch the replay, but uh, this is a Flight Pose stand, and you can buy them at flightpose.com. Uh, they're $14.99 each. They come in three different sizes. This is the middle size, the medium size. There's a, a two and a half inch, and then there's a six inch also, but these arms articulate. And uh, last time I, look, I looked at their page, there's a 10% off coupon, so off your purchase. So you could save some money if you get the flight stands there. Uh, let's see. I hear that Sci-Fi is doing another Twilight Zone marathon tomorrow. Very cool. You know what I want is I want to watch some of the 80s Twilight Zone uh, shows. It's three of my favorite shows from the 1980s, for all the old farts in here, uh, were uh, Alfred Hitchcock Presents. They, they brought back Alfred Hitchcock in the 80s, for those that don't know. Twilight Zone from the 80s. Uh, they had that TV show in the 80s, and then they also did the Twilight Zone movie, which is a movie, another movie I want to buy. And then Amazing Stories, which is a, a it was kind of a St Steven Spielberg led show from the 80s, um, which they're actually making new versions of. And I can't remember which freaking app you have to subscribe to to get Amazing Stories, but they they made a new version of that. All right, so let's do this here. All right. I had to hide someone because they were blowing up the chat and I couldn't see other people's uh, messages. 147 strong, 90 thumbs up. Thank you for the thumbs up. I have three and a half, two and a half minutes left. So I'm just taking a look here. Dude, I'm not being rude, but no one cares about the damn Twilight Zone shows. Uh, I do, Walter Dutton. I do care. And a lot of people do care. So it's okay. You're not being rude, but I like it. Tales from the Dark Side, anyone? That show kind of gave me nightmares in the 80s. Amazing Stories is on Apple. Oh, Apple Plus, right? Outer Limits. That one also gave me nightmares. Um, a lot of shows gave me nightmares. Twilight Zone is one of my favorites, Lord Luigi says. What a freaking jabroni. <laughs> Do you realize how many nerds exist? They care, Rappin' Ron says. Uh, a lot of people care about Twilight uh, Tales from the Dark Side, yes. Uh, Quantum Leap was a great show. It was a great show. Um, Explorers, was that the name of the show? Another time jump show from the 80s. Explorers, was that the name of it? I don't freaking remember. Thoughts on WrestleMania? They're already done recording it, apparently. So for the wrestling fans out there, they are done recording WrestleMania. They are done recording the Raw after WrestleMania and SmackDown after WrestleMania. So they've recorded them. It's all done. Um, so we have... At least a few weeks of programming. When is WrestleMania? Next weekend? So Explorers was a movie. Uh, Ethan Hawke was in Explorers. There was the one where they go out into space. They build their own spacecraft. It's another movie I want to buy, Explorers. Uh, River Phoenix was in that too. That was a fun movie. Explorers was the name. Dude, he had an old school clock. Yeah, like a little timepiece. Okay, so I was right. Explorers was a show. It had the little, little kid with the real curly hair. Uh, let's see. You're so awesome. Keep up the videos. I'm a flight attendant and I've been freaking out about the coronavirus. It's nice to listen to your live streams. Thank you. I watched a, uh, a video and I don't know what airline it was, <laughs> but the flight attendant was doing the little, uh, messaging before the flight starts and he's holding a bottle of Lysol and he goes, if any of you coughs or sneezes, I will Lysol your ass. It was so freaking funny the way he said it. So I don't know where you could see that, but I, I saw it on like Instagram or something, but it was such a funny clip. Uh, but to all flight attendants out there, please be safe. Hopefully you're wearing masks and rubber gloves and stuff and 
please stay safe. This virus sucks ass. I got to say, this thing sucks. Um, coronavirus can just suck my ass right there. That was Voyager. Voyager! Art Star, Art Star Confidential. Voyagers. Was it Voyager or Voyagers? Thank you. Holy crap, you just jogged my memory. Time Bandits, another great movie, BJ Bonsall. You guys are killing it with these movies. Uh, so I need Explorers, Time Bandits. What was the third one? There was the third movie I needed to buy. I'm going to have to go back and look at the comments and then go to Amazon and buy them immediately. Uh, Toy Chase says, loved amazing stories. Rap and Ron, I'm at an hour. I got to go, guys. But those kids made a spaceship. Yes. Who was the third kid? The third kid was the one that was kind of like a tough guy. And uh, he never really made it big in the movies, but it was River Phoenix, Ethan Hawke, and then the third kid, The Giver. Um, coronavirus can go suck a Canadian <laughs> goose turd as it lands on it. Time Bandits. Time. I have it on uh, 4K. I have the Criterion Collection, Time Bandits. Willow, another great movie. God, you guys are killing it. Let's just talk 80s movies on the next live stream on, on Wednesday. Just start freaking making lists. Just start throwing 80s movies, badass 80s movies into the chat. And I will just freaking go on Amazon and just start buying them because I love 80s movies so much. MacGyver. Okay, MacGyver. Great show. Richard Dean Anderson. Tales from the Crypt. I have uh, most of those seasons. Flight of the Navigator. I need to find. Rocketeer was a good movie from the 90s. All right, guys. I got to go. I'm in an hour. I got to get back to work. 100 thumbs up. You guys kick ass. 146 people on here strong. I got to go, though. Excalibur. Another great movie. Missing in action. Holy frick. Goonies, of course. Wednesday, Dragon Slayer. Oh my God, I forgot about that movie. Oh, you guys. Uh, what was the Matthew Broderick movie? That I, War Games. That was another good movie. I gotta go, guys. I gotta hit end stream. I'm still here. It says end. Toodles. Adios. You guys are awesome. Stay safe. Stay healthy. See you on Wednesday. Bye bye.